I want to bring in Alan Nuckman, who is joining us from the CME Group. He's the Chief Market Strategist at Agora Financial. Alan, good afternoon. So is the market moving Hello? past this or just taking a break, waiting to see what shoe drops next? What do you make of this situation? Well, the market action is very muted. I mean, we were just close to unchanged. I guess we're down a quarter percent in the S&P or so, so not much action. Even with the sell-off on Friday, Friday we were down a whopping three quarters of one percent. So <laughs> this is not a major shakeout. Uh, we've seen this movie before. I'm not going to say that, that, that word contagion concern, uh, but we've seen this movie before. I don't know if you remember a few years ago, there was Greece 1, there was Greece 2, neither one ever developed, and then there was uh, Cyprus. Uh, if you remember, there was a time when they thought that would be one of the dominoes that would bring the whole financial world uh, to its knees. Didn't happen. Not so fast, my friend. <laughs> yeah, no, I think that's pretty uh, interesting. You bring up the whole uh, trilogy for Greece and almost forgot about uh, the uh, Cypriot contagion as well. At last <laughs> week, I was uh, trying to maybe compare it to something more recent with the Italian situation. Just given that the market kind of responded the same way, we saw buying in bonds right. and we saw uh, some strength in the US dollar, but really it seems like uh, all that has faded today, except for maybe volatility being elevated. Any thoughts on what's going on with the VIX, Allen, or is it nothing to really get worked up at when it's still at 14? Well, there's a lot of moving parts. To, to look at the VIX, we've been trading in a range, and let's remember last week, we got to the lowest level we've been at since January. So we were at 10 and change. So uh, it had traded for a long period of time between 12 and 14. That target of 10 on the downside didn't quite get there, but we're still within that, that range. And let's remember that extreme high in February is 50. 50. So mm. at 14, you, you compare those two. I, I don't think there's much of a comparison there right now. So let's talk about what the markets did do last week. We saw on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, the S&P and the NASDAQ got within striking distance of all time forever highs. So I would view this as a profit taking pullback excuse and nothing less. Uh, that's all we're seeing here is a little bit of an unwind. Uh, I think someone's going to be a little bit uh, over aggressive if they, if they think it's different this time and they think this is going to be the thing that's going to knock the market down. Uh, I, I'm not a believer in that. I think we're just getting a pause. We're at the end of earnings season. And when we were unable to push through and make those new record highs last week, I think there was a little bit more caution. And this is just simply, uh, you know, a, a, a something that's happening around the world that you can you grab the headlines, but it's not going to have any impact on America. Uh, Al, let's talk about bonds for a sec, uh, because last time we were talking, we were seeing a little bit of a yield move higher. And then basically we got stuck right, right back within this range that you pointed out to us. And I look at this and... Again, this is a market that seems to be much more responsive to things like you know introductions of geopolitical risk, arguably, than some broader trend to uh, higher yields, inflationary concerns. It seems like this is a market that still is very reactive to uh, you know the safety play. Are you surprised at all by that? Somewhat. From, for a long time, there's been a disconnect and you weren't seeing those, those money flows and that, that natural reaction that this, you know, stocks typically go down and bonds go up from a, a, a money flow and a safety factor. But you know, it's nice to see that come back. But let's put it in perspective. Again, we're still in this range that we've been in between you know, 140 and 145 in the 30 year uh, when you look at the, you know, you look at the, the price there. So you know, we were at that midpoint, we, we were bouncing around, so we did see a little bit of a, of a rally in that, but still nothing significant. We've got the 10-year note still at this 120 handle, absolutely nowhere fast, uh, not much happening there. You know, what did get my attention, I know I've been a dollar non-believer, uh, we did make new highs in the dollar. Now, I look at things on a weekly basis, so let's see where we are by, by the end of the week uh, and, and see where we are. Like today, for example, when we made new highs, we were actually were lower for much of the you know, last couple of hours. Um, I will have to look to see where we close, but it could be somewhat uh, not very powerful for the market to make new highs and have a lower close. So hmm. we'll have to wait and see. This might just be a little bit of a, a short-term squeeze, again, using this, this, the turkey troubles as an excuse. Yeah, Al, last point here. What are you gonna be looking at this week? There's uh, not a whole bunch of economic data. We've kind of got another quiet week on that front. Earnings now coming into the uh, twilight, if you will, apart from retail. So uh, what's gonna drive this market or is it gonna be uh, sleepy summer trading? Well, I'm keeping an eye on the dollar, like I said. I think that's my number one focus. I've, I've been you know, keeping eyes on that and it's been a slow drift higher. 
uh, a little bit of a pop to see if it can get some follow through. But we are, like I said, at the end of earnings season. Something else to keep an eye on is crude oil. Crude oil made new one month lows uh, here today, but then came back and closed nearly unchanged. So uh, I think we can make another push on 70. Now it's been uh, more than three weeks since we've hit 70 in crude oil. If we get there, then we're gonna attack those highs and we attack those highs. The next measured move on crude is 80. That would be a positive for some energy stocks that haven't really uh, done much here recently. And I think that could get the market moving on the upside once again. All right, Alan Nuckman, appreciate the update. Moving across asset classes Thank for you. this afternoon. Thank you, Alan. Mr. Nuckman is the Chief Market Strategist at Agora Financial.